All right, it's great to be here today. My name's Derek Clark, and I'm gonna, I speak all over the world. This is what I do for a living. It's awesome uh, to be able to share a message that hum. Okay, all right, there we go. To be able to share a message of never limiting your life to never, and never giving up. There's five ways I've found to live your life. The first one is to be a tire. And you can be used like a tire and eventually replace. The next one is to be a flyer where you flee the situation, maybe come up with fear, excuses. The next one is a crier. I can't do this the pitiful way, the victim mentality. And then there's the liar that looks good on the outside, but inside they're totally lost. And then there's someone like me and like all of the people that have been before me that are the triers that said, you know what, I'm never gonna give up. I may have been knocked down, but I'm going to get back up. I'm going to never limit my life. I have spent 13 years in Alameda County foster care system. 13 years of, and more than that, of feeling rejection, going through severe, brutal child abuse, and having your mom and the stepdad drop you off at the psychiatric facility of the hospital and saying, we don't want this kid anymore. And from that point on, they take me to 150th Avenue on San Leandro, Oakland border, called, to a place called Snedeker Cottage, an orphanage type of thing where your parents don't want you, and they throw you away. But here's the interesting fact is that my mom and my stepdad kept my brother and sister and got rid of me. Because I had a lot of behavioral and emotional problems, and I'm going to share with you. I had to fight in court in Oakland to get a copy of my records, my psychiatric evaluation and my neurological evaluation. And here's what it states about a little six-year-old kid where the, the professional spent hours and hours with me over days to come up with these diagnoses, these labels. Derek is six years old and is withdrawn from reality. Derek suffered brutal child abuse in the womb. Now, what does that mean in the womb? Well, I'll tell you, my dad at seven months pregnant, not my dad, my mom, (laughs) my mom at seven months pregnant, my dad was so angry that she was pregnant, took her when she was waitressing at a restaurant in San Diego, took her back into the kitchen. And at seven months pregnant, you got a nice bump and threw her down and proceeded to kick the living daylights out of her stomach and brutalize her. But I lived. There is a purpose for every single one of us. As long as your heart is beating, you got a purpose. And so I was brutalized as a kid. I have scars all over me from brutal child abuse. Brutal. Hot scalding water to drowning in the toilet to all these things that have happened to me. And at six years old, they said that I had erratic psychosis and that I had the IQ of a two-year-old. And I had small and large motor skill problems where I could not walk down or walk upstairs at six years old. I couldn't time myself to walk downstairs. If I started that one stair, I'd fall all the way down. I didn't understand words like dog, cat, boy. I had psychosexual confusion. I had the anatomy of a boy, but I didn't know I was a boy. I couldn't count to 10. I have a three-year-old that can count to 25. I didn't know my ABCs. And my kid, three years old, knows his ABCs. I had a very limited vocabulary. And they gave me all these labels, erratic psychosis, ADHD, reactive attachment disorder. And then they gave me the ultimate label at the end that says, Derek has the IQ of a two-year-old and is mentally handicapped. And back in those days, they didn't use the handicap word. They used the R word. And so this was how I came into the system, in the foster care system, already rejected, already thrown away, and they said that I was not adoptable. But I'm here to tell you, I've been all over the world meeting amazing parents that taken kids that might have cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, or some other special needs, and I'm I'm here to tell you that every child is worthy of love, and every child is worthy of a family. They said I wasn't adoptable. If an adequate foster home could not be found for me, I would be sent to the psychiatric institution to spend the rest of my Uh, children's uh, teenage life there. So, I went through a series of foster homes and then one special foster home took me in for a weekend. Just Friday through Sunday. And it was a home on a farm. And I loved it. You would catch me not talking to any other human beings because I didn't trust anybody. 
Because if I couldn't, you know, if my own mom and dad gave me up, how could I trust anybody? But you'd find me in one place, the chicken coop, with a ton of chickens, and it would be like, right? I'd hang out with these chickens, and I loved birds, because I figured one day as a kid, I'm going to fly away. And they kept me over that weekend, and at the end of that weekend, I threw the biggest temper tantrum on that driveway. And said, where am I going to go? I don't have a home. I don't have a home. And my foster mom says to my dad, can we try him out for a week? The social worker says yes, and a week turned into a month. And a month turned into months, which turned into a year, which turned into years. They are my mom and dad. They never gave up on me. Love sometimes is thicker than blood. I needed love. Now let me tell you how, both, uh, how special both of my foster parents are. They're both teachers. My mom is a juvenile hall teacher. She, so she didn't take nothing from me, right? And my, mom, my dad was a second grade teacher. And what they discovered at nine and 10 years old was that I wasn't all the labels, all the professionals that diagnosed me. That I was a sponge. I just needed somebody to invest inside of me, invest, with, invest in me. And I started learning to read and write at nine and 10 years old. I was that delayed. Now, I'm gonna fast forward to high school. High school was a very difficult time for me. My parents put me in a brand new school district to give me a clean slate because I had been suspended and in trouble, for, uh, kicked out of uh, elementary school all the time for disrespect and for fighting. And they put me at Hayward High. And I walked into Hayward High and I'm this invisible kid that nobody really pays attention to. And I find my little posse, my little crew that I hang out with and it's these skater punks. And I gotta do something cool with my hair to fit in with them. So we shave my head to the skin and we give myself a little king's crown right here. And then we keep these bangs down right here. We have these bangs and we dye everything orange. Now I'm a skinhead on the rest of it, but I got this thing and it looks awful. And he goes, dude, I go, dude, just shave my head. It doesn't look good. He goes, no. He goes in the house. He gets his blue stuff. He puts it in his hands. And he takes these little bangs right here and he gels them up into horns. <laughs> and now I got these horns and I'm like, I am so cool. I'm a misfit. I'm a reject. And I go home to mom, Paul Kettle on the farm. Nice Christian family. And they're going, oh my gosh, Derek, the horns have got to go. And I'm like, no, this is who I am. No, Derek, the horns have got to go. So my dad was an excellent negotiator and I got to keep a little piece of the horn. And so here I am, a sophomore in high school now, and I am in so much trouble. And I'm hanging with my friend Arlen and we see some people in the yard going, hoo, 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 hoo. and I'm like, what's going on over there? Is there a fight? Because I need to be in the fight then. And he's like, no, no, they're doing battles. And I'm like, battles? What's battles? And he goes, rap. And I go, oh my gosh, rap, crap. I don't want to listen to rap, right? And then something told me within, go check it out. So I walk over there and I see two guys battling each other, rap. And I'm like seeing this venom, this poison, this, this anger come out of them. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I turned to my friend, Arlen, little African-American guy. I said, dude, I want to be a rapper. And he goes, nah, dude, you white, you can't do that. And I'm like, no, I want to be a rapper. He goes, no, you got no rhythm. And then I said, let me step up. Let me battle somebody. Let me battle somebody. And he go, no, nah, get out of here, boy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, then let's get in a fight. And he goes, oh, no, 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 okay, we'll bring a rapper. <laughs> they bring a guy up, and now it's me against this guy. I don't even know how to rap. I don't know anything, but I know that I got all this anger inside of me from being a foster youth, feeling rejected, abandoned, all this stuff. And I need to find another creative way to get this anger out. So this guy starts going crazy on me, talking about my mama, talking about my girlfriend, all the things he's going to do, and calling me every name. And I'm looking at this guy going, oh my gosh, this guy's so cool. I'm like, I want to be this guy. And then it was my turn. And I was like, okay. And all I could do was say bad words that I'm not going to repeat. But, uh, you know, and it, I sucked. I, I couldn't do anything. But I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I didn't want to be this skater punk. I wanted to be Rippin' D. That was my rap name now. That was who I wanted to be. And I practiced and practiced and practiced for over a year, losing battles after battles after battles, until one of these battles I did like, I mean, they, they got right, and people were like, what'd you just do there? I go, I don't know, what did I just do? He goes, you did something with your tongue. It was sick, it was, whist, it was wicked, beast, all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, I got a gift. 
It's called tongue twisting. And I started winning. I started going, well, I'll be the ripping. I'm thinking of making, taking my time. I'll be the thinking of making this. I'm going to make it a kick and with the rhyme. And people were like, oh my gosh, that guy is so good. <laughs> and, then, and then I would switch it up reggae style. It's a man that wants to feel. Thinking of making this. I'm going to make it a kick and a kick and with the real. And, it, it, and I started winning all the time. And I changed my name from Rippin' D to Diamond D. Because <laughs> I was solid like a rock, unbreakable. And I came from a little piece of coal to be the man I am today. And I want to share one of those rap songs with you that I wrote when I was 16 and 17. You want to hear it? Okay. Now I cleaned it all up because, uh, you know, when I was 16 and 17, I was a little more hardcore. Now I'm more refined, okay? But this is what was going on in my life at 16, 17 years old, and this is what saved my life was to be able to creatively express myself, to get what was on the inside out. This anger, this bitterness, this resentment, this hatred of even myself. I hated myself. So here we go. This is called This Is My Life Story, the rap. It's my most popular song. I got 125 tracks on iTunes, but this is the one that makes me the most money. (laughs) And it's not expected from this guy in a nice blue shirt, but I'm about to get my swag on. All right, here we go. Everybody runs this is my life from the pain cause This is my story Never give up This is my pain And everybody runs this is my glory runs from the pain cause it hurts Never give up now. You know every day's a struggle If I could change my past I'll be staying out of trouble when I know it last But this is my life A battle for my fate Yeah, who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? I never thought I'd be wearing these shoes of life Man, it don't feel right. When am I gonna see the light and feel the light? Walk with me, someone walk with me. Come on, dad, here, yeah, just talk to me. Have you ever thought about me in your life? Why'd you wanna kill me and take away my life? I'm your blood dad, I'm your son dad. Yeah, it's messed up knowing that I never knew my dad. Who didn't wanna be a dad? What's up with that? Don't understand, but yo, I gotta move past. Hey, daddy, daddy, hey, where you been? In the jail cell, yeah, once again. You ain't never seen me smile, never seen me walk. Never seen me talk, never, never seen me rock this microphone, yeah, this is my home, let me out of my pain, cause I know I'm not alone, yeah, these are my beats, telling how I feel, this is no secret and I'm keeping it real now, mama, why'd you have to run away, why'd you leave me alone, why'd you have to make me pay for my daddy's sins and daddy's eyes, daddy's pain and daddy's lies, now I'm on the outside, yeah, looking inside, I'ma bust this person, even if I gotta die, never give up, never give up, everybody runs, Runs from the pain cause Never give up Everyone loses something sometime I never thought I'd have to lose my mind Yeah, lose my world and lose my soul Lose the ones who really gave me hope Now my sisters been killed and my brothers been killed And my friends been killed When am I gonna heal? The snap of a finger in my life gets jacked to my brain I'm thinking I'm gonna stop the field trap where the love was Yeah, hate begins Now I'm mad at the world cause the pain won't end I'll cover up the hurt cover up the shame. I'm caught in the middle of a hurricane of pain. So pain, pain, show me what you got. Now I'm never gonna let anyone back in my heart till my wrists start to bleed and I don't feel the need of living this life. Will someone help me? Man, I need you. Say a prayer for me. Yeah, let me believe that you believe in me. Yeah, let me believe that you believe in me. Yeah, let me believe that you believe in me. Yeah, this is my life. This is my story. This is my pain. But this is my glory. My glory. Thank you. So here I was, this 17-year-old kid, this 17-year-old kid that was in a lot of trouble. My brother was killed, my sister was killed, my good friend was all shot and killed when I was 16, 17 years old. I had lost it. I got kicked out of high school. Now, at 18 years old, when you're a foster youth, the checks stop coming to the foster parents. And life goes on. You go to the streets. It's interesting, the the statistic from the Department of Justice is that 80% of the U.S. prison population has been in foster care. 51% of the U.S. homeless population is aged out foster youth. 77% of the inmates in San Quentin have come from foster care. The statistics were not good for me. My dad was in prison for the mentally insane for a string of armed robberies from Arizona to California. And I knew at this point I wasn't destined to be a loser. I got my butt together, and I went through this counseling course, how to understand my anger and my rage, and my life transformed completely. 
I got reinstated back in high school. I graduated high school with a 1.83 GPA. Now those numbers won't do anything for you. But I'm the first one in my family to graduate high school. My mom dropped out in ninth grade. My dad didn't even go. I'm the first one to break this cycle. That I, I knew I wasn't destined to be a loser. I knew that I had to be something. I learned that what's happened to me is not as important as what's happened inside of me. And for so long, I was letting the inner me become the enemy. If my mom, if my dad couldn't destroy me in the womb, my dad couldn't destroy, and my mom couldn't destroy me, and my stepdad couldn't destroy me, the only person destroying me was me, and I was doing a good job at it. My favorite word is tenacity. Tenacity. Persistent determination. Perseverance. stick to to never give up. Everything has been so difficult from a little kid to a 20-year-old that was trying to find his life, to fight for his life, to fight for his life, tenacity. I learned right then at that point that it wasn't about my IQ, this little foster kid that was given up. It was about my I will. It wasn't about how much smarts I have. It was about how much heart I have. And I was never going to let my past infect my future. I was never going to let my past define me, confine me. I was going to one day make my past and allow it to refine me. See, the, ma- the past is not meant to hold you back. The past for me was meant to prepare me for this day to stand in front of you, to speak all over the world. To share a story of hope, share a message of hope, share some inspiration. Here's a Derek Clark acronym. You can Google it. Hope, helping one person every day. And when you get beyond helping one person every day, then it's helping other people excel. And the way for me to be able to have hope in this life was to give hope. To go from being selfish to being selfless. My life transformed By the time I was 25 years old, I made my first $100,000 in a year. By the time I was 32, I made my first million. Nothing could stop me. I've been married 19 years. I have four kids, all from the same woman. I broke a cycle right there, right? I mean, you know, back in those days, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't looked on, you know what I'm saying? But like, I broke all these cycles. I tell everybody, you know, I work on, they go, well, did you break the cycle of child abuse? Of course. Because in my counseling course, they told me, you, you've got all the muscles, Derek, but you don't have one very important muscle, which is called the patience muscle. And when I learned that I could activate that patience muscle, I am slow to wrath, right? My life transformed because I believed in myself, because others believed in me as this little kid and believed that hey, I am not my labels. I am not my labels. And my parents didn't feed into the labels. My life transformed, and I, I'm here to tell you that if you had told me years ago that you would grow up, Derek, and be married 19 years, and have these beautiful, precious children to raise, and speak for a living, and write a bunch of books, this kid that was kicked out of school wrote six books, and impacts millions of people, I'd say, no, that's not me. I'm the misfit. I'm the reject." until a teacher and a mentor taught me the word tenacity, tenacity. Thank you for having me. Thank you.